Good day. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Douglas Harder, and in this topic, we're going to look at the bisection method. In this topic, we're going to look at the idea behind the bisection method, a technique for approximating the value of a root of a continuous function where we are using bracketing. We will determine how fast this algorithm converges and compare it to Newton's method. We'll look at an example of this algorithm and we will go into further detail again comparing it with Newton's method. We will then look at an implementation of this algorithm. Suppose we have a real valued function of a real variable and suppose we have two points a sub k and b sub k such that the value of the function at these two points have opposite signs. So for example, as we see here, a sub k f evaluated at that point is negative, while f at b sub k is positive. If the function f is continuous, then by the intermediate value theorem, there must be a root on the interval a sub k to b sub k. Now, the function may be something quite straightforward, in which case, here's the root. Alternatively, you could actually have multiple roots, but our job is to find one root. And again, as an engineer, if you do not know how many roots you're looking for or where to find that root, um, that sounds more like a personal problem to me. And again, the function could be once again significantly different. Now, how could we get a better approximation of the root? We know the root is somewhere on this interval. So suppose we evaluate the function at the midpoint. So we find the midpoint between a sub k and b sub k, evaluate the function at that point, and that point is, we note, positive. Consequently, the intermediate value theorem guarantees that there must be a root on the first half of the interval. It doesn't exclude the possibility that there is not also a root on the other half. However, at this point, we are guaranteed that there is a root on the first half. Consequently, we can now continue with a new smaller subinterval, which is bounded by a sub k plus 1, which is, remains the value of a sub k, but b sub k plus 1 was the midpoint between the original two bounds. As you can see, this technique applies bracketing. Thus, given two bounds, a sub k and b sub k, such that f evaluated at these two points have opposite signs, we will proceed as follows. We will first find the midpoint, which is the average value of these two endpoints. Now, if f evaluated at this midpoint is equal to zero, something that's almost certainly never going to happen, we have actually found a root, so we're done, and we will return m sub k. If, however, f evaluated at a sub k and at this midpoint have opposite signs, then our next left-hand bound will remain the same. It will still be a, the value of a sub k. However, our right-hand bound, b sub k plus 1, will be assigned the value of the midpoint. The only other case is for f at m sub k, or at the midpoint, and at the right-hand point to have opposite signs, in which case we update the left-hand endpoint with the midpoint, and we leave the right-hand endpoint the same. So at any one step, we will approximate the root by choosing whichever endpoint, a sub k or b sub k, whichever one of those two has when evaluated 
when we evaluate the function at those points, has the smallest absolute value. Now, what's the maximum error? Well, in theory, the root could be arbitrarily close to the other endpoint. So technically, the maximum error could be almost as large as the distance between the two points. Suppose that we chose a sub k to be the root because f evaluated at a sub k was smaller in absolute value than f evaluated at b sub k, again, also in absolute value. Uh, however, the root could actually be arbitrarily close to b sub k, so the maximum error is the width of the interval. Now, with every single step we apply, the maximum error is halved because at every single step we are choosing the midpoint. Consequently, if h represents the error at any one step, then the error at the next step is a half h. That is, it's a constant times h, and therefore we will describe this technique to be big O of h squared, or order h. Did I say order h squared? No, order h. You'll recall that Newton's method was order h squared. As an example of how the bisection method works, let's find the first root of the same function we saw before, 2e to the negative 2x minus e to the negative x. And we're going to start with the bracketed region 0 to 1. And the solution, ln of 2, is on this interval. So these are all the values we're going to track. And so we start with a naught equaling zero and b naught is equal to one. And we can see that f evaluated at these two points do indeed have opposite signs. Now, we would approximate the root by one as that has the smaller value, but potentially the error could be almost as large as one. We could calculate the midpoint, and we note that the value at the midpoint is positive, and therefore we will update the left-hand endpoint. So A1 will become the previous midpoint, B1 will be the value of B0. Now the error has dropped by a factor of 2. We calculate the midpoint and the value of the function at that point. Well, we see now that, that the value at 0 0.75 is negative, and therefore we will update b. So b2 will be the previous midpoint, while b a2 will be the value of a1. Error is dropped by a factor of two. Now, we can continue to do this calculate the midpoint, evaluate the function there, and update one of the endpoints. Calculate the midpoint, update one of the endpoints. Calculate the midpoint, update one of the endpoints. Notice how slow this algorithm is converging. Once again, calculate the midpoint, update one of the endpoints. Calculate the midpoint, update the right-hand endpoint. Calculate the midpoint, update the left-hand endpoint. Calculate the midpoint, update the right-hand endpoint. Calculate the midpoint, update the left-hand endpoint. All right, so at this point, our approximation of the root would be B10, as the absolute value of the function evaluated at that point is smaller than that of the absolute value of the function evaluated at the left-hand endpoint. However, the maximum error is still approximately 0 0.00098, or significantly larger than Newton's method after just five or six iterations. So this algorithm does converge much more slowly. Now, the bisection method does converge very slowly when compared to Newton's method. Um, however, if there is a root and f is continuous on the entire initial interval,
then this method is more or less guaranteed to converge. Uh, it may not converge if the slope at the root is, however, close to infinity. So, for example, if you take a look at this particular function, the cube root of x cubed plus 0.3x plus 0.7, at the root, the slope is infinity. Consequently, if you were to try to find the root, you'd have to get very close to this root in order to get a value that, when evaluated at this function, has a sufficiently small absolute value. All right, so this, however, isn't a normal situation engineers will find themselves in. All right, let's implement the bisection method. We take a function f as an argument as well as our two initial endpoints, a and b. We have the two constraints, epsilon step and epsilon absolute value. We will then also have the maximum number of iterations. Now, we'll assert that a is less than b, and we will calculate f at each of these two endpoints. The reason we will calculate and store these in local variables is we do not want to repeatedly calculate these values. Now, if f evaluated at either of these endpoints is not finite, we'll simply return not a number. Also, if f at a is 0, that's a root, so we'll just return a. Otherwise, if f at b is 0, b is a root, so we will again return 0. Carrying on, we now have a for loop that iterates a maximum of max iteration times. We will calculate the midpoint. Now notice I did not calculate a plus b all over 2. Instead, I calculated a plus b minus a over 2. Now a and b are already far apart, so this isn't really going to have any issues with subtractive cancellation. However, what this avoids is the possibility that a plus b causes an overflow, that is, equals infinity. So instead of calculating a plus b over 2, we calculate a plus the difference between the two endpoints divided by 2. We'll calculate the value of the function at this midpoint. If the value at this midpoint is not finite, we will return not a number. If the value at the midpoint is zero, we have found a root. We don't have to do anything else. We can just return the midpoint. Again, this is very unlikely to occur, but we should check. Otherwise, if f at a and f at the midpoint have the same sign, then we'll want to update the left-hand endpoint. So we'll update a, and we will update f evaluated at a. Notice this way we only ever evaluate the function at any point once. The only alternative now is that we are updating b with the value of the midpoint. Now, if the distance between the two endpoints is sufficiently small, then we can proceed by checking which of the two endpoints has a smaller value and is that value sufficiently small compared to epsilon absolute value. If both conditions are satisfied, we will return one of the two endpoints. Anyway, we finish our loop, and if that loop exits, that means we've iterated a maximum number of iteration times, we're not able to find a root, and therefore we will return not a number. Following this topic, you now understand the idea behind the bisection method, and you know that it converges according to big O of H. That is, 
with each single step, the error is reduced by a constant times the previous error. In this case, that constant is always one half. You've seen an example, and you understand that unlike Newton's method, the bisection method will generally converge under normal conditions. You've also considered and seen an implementation of the bisection method. Here are the references, acknowledgements, the colophon, and a disclaimer. Cheers.